Hi in this video we will see how do we configure database connectors. Database connectors are usually used when you have your own database and you want to fetch and insert data in it instead of using sheets. Let's start by adding a connector. So here we can select any of the relational databases. Currently MySQL PostgreSQL and MySQL are supported. Support for other databases will be added soon. Let's select MySQL and click on add. We can update the image and give name and description and click on continue. So here we'll keep this field as is and these are all the details which will be required to connect to my MySQL database and click continue. Here we have to first test our database connection with these DB details and on successful testing it will add this connection in our account. Here I have a public MySQL database which has read only permission but since it is read only we will only be able to do read operations in our query, but in your case you can have a connection string with write permission to your database to insert or delete rows from your database. Let me copy these details from here. For this there is no password so we will keep this empty and let's give an account name which will be visible when I am using this in my app. Let me test this connection, and as you can see my connection is successful, so this will not be added under the custom database connectors section. Here you can see, for REST API connectors there is add API and manage accounts option and for DB connectors there is only add query option. So let's add a query now by clicking on add query, here in the query editor you can see on the right side all the tables of this database. I can expand the individual table to see all the column names which are there along with the column types. Let's give the name of the query to get all authors. Let's write a query to get a list of all rows from the author table. I can simply run this to see the result. Here we can see there are 73 rows in this particular table. Let's modify this query and we can limit the result to 10 for example and run this and you can verify the same. Like this you can even add a complex query which is supported by MySQL database. Now, let's modify this query to get authors by name. Add a search parameter in the query using the like operator and run this. You can see all the results containing aims in the name column. Now, let's see how we add dynamic values in our query. For this we will have to add the variable. Let me give a variable name. Here these are the supported field types which are available. For searching by name, the type required is string. Let's give a test value that will be used when I am running this query and default value we will keep it empty. Let me add help text and click on add. Let's add one more variable for limit. Limit is of integer type and let me give a test value and provide a help text and click on add variables. Now we can replace aims with a name variable inside double curly braces. Likewise we can update the limit variable as well. On running this, we received the same result as we got previously but with name and limit as dynamic fields. Let me edit the test value of the name variable and change it to empty. Here you can see all the rows are returned but due to the limit set to 10, 10 rows are returned. Now let's save this. Here you can see our query got added successfully under MySQL database connector. Using this query in our app is the same as using REST API connectors. Only difference you can see is when I click on connectors our DB connectors will appear under custom database connectors. Let's select this one which we created and the other difference is unlike REST API connectors there is no add account option since our DB is the same we don't have a multiple account addition provision. REST all the configuration is the same. The help text we gave to the variables is shown here. This is how we configure database connectors in the studio. Thank you for watching. For more videos visit our YouTube page.